Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like eight o'clock, and I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, and we got Peyton on the radio. You'll see him a lot. We were used to be like, hey, thanks for coming on, but it's not like that anymore. We're just that. We're just hanging out yeah. all the time. We're hanging out all the time talking about hockey, and every once in a while we hit the record button and talk about it. So uh, I'm finishing my series, and by the way, he's we, uh, Peyton's doing a cool series too, almost similar, kind of similar, but not really. He's more of a ratings uh, of everybody's off season, and uh, we just did a Winnipeg one. You can go check that out after this. You just did a whole bu- a whole slab of them this week, didn't you? Yeah, I've been I've been pumping them out, getting ready for the the new hockey season. As uh, we're not that far away, ten days away from of this recording, we're we're almost there. We're almost yeah. there from seeing NHL hockey, from seeing McDavid back on the ice, Crosby, McKinnon. Oh yeah. man, I think yeah. I might overdose on hockey. It's gonna be <laughs> wicked. We might even do some uh, lives together. We're thinking about possibly doing that. But today we're gonna do the Vancouver Canucks. This is my last mm-hmm. one of the series. You can check them all out of there. I, we did it in sort of parallel alphabetical order, which is basically not alphabetical order at all. Alphabetical order-ish. It's kind of how I do my ish. life. It's very ish-ish. So, uh, anyways, Vancouver Canucks. Let's get into it, buddy. Uh, right off the get-go, I guess so let's start with the biggest move rather than the first move. Uh, and, uh, which Schmidt, let's just get that right out of the way. Nate Schmidt, that pickup, how did you like that? Cause it kind of went all through the year. We were like, is Vancouver going to do anything or what's going on? And then boom, what did you like about that move? My friend, if you did at all, I think Nate Schmidt's a great pickup for the uh, Vancouver Canucks. Honestly, this is a guy that could potentially either play alongside of Quinn Hughes or, could play alongside Tyler Myers or just about anywhere on this roster. And not just that, he could play on the right side as a left-handed D-man, which there wasn't a lot of D-man out there available for the Vancouver Canucks. There really wasn't and wasn't something that uh, was going to be cheap either. Nate Schmidt, uh, yes, he's carrying a $6 million value, but when you're having Edler come off the books next season and he'll be probably taking a cheaper deal next season what he, than what he did that this year, it's a great deal, honestly. And you only gave up a fourth round or a third round pick for a guy like Nate Schmidt, who is very offensively capable, who has played some great defense alongside of a guy like Shea Theodore, who uh, is talked about as one of the best uprising defensemen in the league right now. And, and he, if he's going to be play alongside of Quinn Hughes or whoever he's going to play alongside of, he's going to do great. And this defense core here in Vancouver, I think, could be potentially one of the best in the Canadian division just because of the fact that you're looking at Quinn Hughes, you're looking at Nate Schmidt and even Alexander Edler, Alexander Edler like is a great defenseman as well. You just have a lot of solid defenders and now, yeah, Edler is getting older, but his defense is still there and his veteran leadership as well. But Nate Schmidt is going to bring a lot to the Vancouver Canucks, especially down the road as well. He'll be able to be a, a great, maybe, uh, top pairing or a great top four guy for a pretty long time there in Vancouver. Yeah, we'll we'll stick with the defense. I mean, I can't say much more than that. I just love that deal. When they made that deal, I oh, was man. like, boom, what a I was I was like out. stunned. I was yeah. stunned. I was like a third round pick for Nate Schmidt? Yeah. What? But I mean, that's just the type of deals you were seeing this year. Um, we've been talking about it all this year, and we've been seeing a lot of these weird cap dump moves where you practically get the guy for <laughs> for free, basically, just because he has a high high salary cap because of this weird um, uh, COVID era that we're in right now where the cap stayed flat. Uh, in most terms, we wouldn't be seeing a year like this. Vancouver wouldn't be getting Nate Schmidt for free. Nate Schmidt, I would have to say, is a decent pick or a prospect for that guy, but it was only a third-round pick, and who knows? Maybe we might be seeing more deals like this later down the road, but if the cap does go up, you most likely won't see an offseason like how we did this year with picking up players for free, basically. But yeah, like that Nate Schmidt deal... It was stunning. It was everything you wanted in a deal. And um, it's a franchise-building deal. 
basically is what a lot of people call this deal. And, and I think it's that it's that perfect definition. Yeah, it's also a combination of owners losing a lot of money because of the whole COVID situation. And they don't yeah. even want to spend to spend to the cap. It's not yeah. even like like Florida, for instance, probably could have used a Nate Schmidt no problems and given up a second mm. round pick for him. He's only 29 years old. But anyways, it was shrewd. They got him. So let's stick to the defense, something that happened just recently. Um, and then we'll get into the goaltending as well. But um, well, first of all, you right right now you got to there's going to be a fight for that sixth spot. And uh, because they signed Hamannick, which they didn't even really sign, you can talk about mm-hmm. that on a PTO talking about like cap issues, Hamannick going on a PTO and then you've got you Levy and maybe Brogan Rafferty there fighting it out for that spot. What do you think of getting Hamannick on a PTO and having that uh, you Levy and uh, Rafferty is depth. What do you think about those guys? I think they're defensive depth. And I mean, a lot, that's, that's the biggest thing going into this year. We've been talking a lot about seeing teams going with depth this season. And that's what the Vancouver Canucks are doing with their defense. And they're kind of doing the exact same way the Oilers are doing it. Oilers are building a very deep defense core. And I think Hamannick's a great guy. The problem with Hamannick is he was playing like top two time in in Calgary. They were relied on a lot of Travis Hamannick to play stellar. And Hamannick is not that guy, ladies and gents. He is not that guy to play top pair defensively, no matter how much you think he is, because he's a first round pick. He's or a second round pick. I mean, he's not. No matter how much you paid for him, Calgary, he was not going to be a top pairing guy for your team. Are you, are you saying Calgary overvalued a player? You no, you tell lies. No, oh god, I, be, I better be running for the hills, guys. All the Flames yeah. fans are going to be after me now. Um, of course I think they overvalued a player. That's what they do best. Um, <laughs> anyways, back to Vancouver. I think I think Kamenik is going to be a great move for the team. It makes them so deep, right? Like. You already got Jordy Ben down there. Now, if, if for example, you Levy, maybe he jumps up and he does a lot better. Now you have him who could possibly play there. Uh, Chatfield, you got Rafferty, like we were talking about. There's so many guys that could potentially jump into the roster for the Vancouver Canucks. And if Hamannick does sign a deal with the Canucks, that's great. Now, I, as a personal, I would maybe look at a, a maybe a top a uh, second line right winger to maybe go on to the roster instead of maybe bringing a Hamannick because of the fact that they don't got a lot of offense going for them. Like, yeah, they got Pedersen, they got Miller, they got Bester. But what happens if one of those guys fall down? Fearland's already down with an injury. One of your other kind of guys that you were hoping that was going to be a goal scorer. Are you hoping that maybe Hoglander jumps up in the lineup or uh, maybe a Cole Lind? Because looking at that second line center or that that second line, you only really got Pearson Horvat, and then Goddett's the only guy that's had twelve goals, and maybe you rely on Jake for Tannen. Maybe that's another guy. But honestly, I'm really excited about their defensive core. I would probably not sign Travis Amanik. I would possibly be looking at maybe adding some more offense to the team for the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah, I think with Travis, I mean, he seems to have made it quite clear ever since he was on the island that he wanted to play in the West. There's some family issues going on. I was really surprised Winnipeg didn't spend do some, spend some money on him, uh, especially when you consider he only had to get a tryout. So um, kind of odd there why Winnipeg has seemed to have absolutely no interest in, in him whatsoever. Uh, but he goes in and gets a PTO, and I agree. I mean... They, they do have some, and when you consider the fact that defense was the problem for Vancouver not too long ago, now all of a sudden their defense doesn't look too shabby. So we'll stay with the defense in the most important part of the defense. And the first move they actually made in the season, getting Braden Holtby to mm-hmm. play with uh, Thatcher Demko. What did you think? What do you think about that deal? And I mean, I think Braden is from BC too, right? Uh, no, he's actually from Saskatchewan. Um, oh, he's from Saskatchewan. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah right, right, yeah. right, right. He's from he's from Lloyd, but he's from the West here, anyways. Yeah, he is. Uh, Brain Hall. Yeah, I like this signing. He, he, I know a lot of people. Oh, yeah, we can rely on Thatcher Demko. Vancouver fans were saying. Um, 
I love Thatcher Demko. I think Thatcher Demko is a good goalie. I love the way he played against uh, Vegas and stuff like that in the playoffs. He was stellar. He was the reason why um, Vegas practically got eliminated because he was in their heads rent free. He was in the heads of the Vegas Gold Knights. Every single one of them, especially when they went up against Dallas. And but the thing is, Thatcher Demko didn't do as well in the regular season. He had a 905 save percentage with a 3. Uh, 3.06. He wasn't the greatest in the regular season, especially with those 27 games. You bring in Brain Hall B as an insurance. He had a bad year last year, and now you're bringing him in to probably play a limited games role for the next two years. Right? He struggled last year. He didn't do too bad in the playoffs. He didn't have the worst numbers. But the year before that, he had great numbers. The year that they went to the playoffs, Halpy was the reason why this team made it to the playoffs. So now you have two capable goalies who can play in the playoffs. Halpy, who's a guy who has played 97 games in playoffs. That's huge for a goalie who uh, is going to be playing alongside a young goalie like that, your Demko. And especially Demko, who's been so highly talked about for the past co- uh, couple of years now and how big people have been kind of bringing up Demko and he's going to be the next big thing. And Brian Holpe will help Thatcher Demko become a goalie. And and that tandem, if Holpe has a bounce back year, this tandem, and especially that defense core combining with that, could potentially be one of the best defenses and goaltending duos maybe in the Canadian division. I mean, you look at the Maple Leafs. They got Anderson and Campbell. Oilers, Koskinen, and Smith. I don't even want to talk about Smith, but um, there's a lot, a lot of teams that like their goaltending tandem looks pretty sick. I, I like the way that the Vancouver Canucks have kind of built their defense, going with a really big defense because they know they have Patterson and Besser who can rip up this Canadian division. But now they have a very solid defensive core who can also shut down those big goal scores in such a highly offensive division that we're now in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a pretty much low risk move bringing it. Is. it it's uh, and uh, we were talking before this. It wouldn't be a bad idea for Braden to move off to Seattle next year, and they yeah. find a di- a different goaltender. It'd be good for his career, uh, to because it would probably lengthen his career if they if Seattle would be interested in taking a thirty one. And that's the thing like for that. uh, for Seattle next year. Um, the thing is, like, t- next year, there's going to be so many tandems for Seattle to pick from. Like, you got Arizona with Kemper and Rant, and, like, you got Montreal with Price and Allen. Like, you got so many teams that have, like, two great goalies. It's going to be a hard decision on what goalie you keep and what goalie you lose. And whoever, like, you might be seeing a lot of, like, protection deals just to keep a goalie on your team more than like an offensive or defense player because of the fact that there's so many tandems coming in t- uh, into the season. And, and I mean, the tandems are essential nowadays since we've been seeing more of that thing from like Dallas um, uh, for the tandem goalies. And for, especially for this 56 game schedule, you need two goalies that can play really good like a Braden Halpy and a Thatcher Demko. Yeah, um, I was going to try to quickly look up because you did remind me also that there's a lot, because of that, there's a lot of free agent goaltenders next year too. Yeah. And Seattle's going to get the option to be able to sign uh, the, uh, sign free agents before free, agents op- free agency opens. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's going to be a lot of competition for goaltending there. Uh, you just mentioned, like, if I we we'll get into that when we talk about Seattle, I guess, because I was going to say, like, maybe some goaltending I'd be interested if I was them, but Holpe would have to be of some interest, um, especially if they can find a young goaltender to have a guy that's mm-hmm. won a cup. All that. Another thing about Holpe I find is people forget is Washington has never been a stellar defensive team, too. So it'd be interesting to see how his struggles translate over into Vancouver where um, I think they actually have a better uh, defensive lineup than as a team, as a system, as a way of playing. And Washington had a really rough year last year. Like they fired their coach after the season. It was a really rough year for the Washington Capitals last year. They just, 
They weren't themselves. Now, this year, they definitely built themselves back up. But Brayden Holpe is going to a really solid defense core, I think. Now, Myers and Myers, Edler, they might be your two kind of derails, especially under top four, Tyler Myers. But uh, Edler still plays really solid defensively. So for Brayden Holpe, you might see those numbers go back up. Um, especially if you're going to be going into kind of like a tandem format where Thatcher Demko will be playing like 30 games with Hoppy, maybe playing 25, maybe even more than Thatcher Demko, just depend on who's the hot hand and who who Green plays, uh, who who Green l- likes more in, in a certain role. Yeah, I love. I think Thatcher Demko is gonna, is 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 everything mm-hmm. that he showed in the playoffs, and if he is, this team is bodes well because. We'll get to their forwards now. Um, they didn't really make any moves on forward with their forwards too much, but they did let some guys go, like to Foley. Yeah, um, and uh, the fact of the matter is, though, this team's not still, I don't think, going to have a problem scoring. What do you think about that? No, I don't, I don't think this team's going to have a problem scoring. When you have Pedersen and Brock Besser, you're never going to have a problem scoring. It's like saying, like, look at that the Oilers and saying that they're going to have problems scoring. When you have McDavid and Drysaddle on your team, you're never going to have problems scoring. You might have problems with depth scoring, and, and that might be a big issue later on in the season, like looking up and down their depth chart. They might have problems with depth scoring, but their main goal scoring with Pedersen and Miller and Besser, they will have a problem with that. And especially with Pearson and Horvat, if, if Pearson has another great season again and puts up maybe another 20 goals, maybe even 15 because it's a shortened season, that's great. That's what you want out of time to Pearson, right? That's what he was drafted to be there in L.A. And he's actually coming in, in to himself a bit more. He's had some bad seasons here and there. Now he's actually starting to explode a bit more uh, again as a player. So, And if you have Jake Vertanen produce in this shortened season as well and you have him play a little bit better, then this team could potentially be a really good team. Now their depth, the third and fourth line that might not be able to score a lot of goals, but they hit, they bruise. That's that's this type of team here in Vancouver. They like the bruise, they like to the hit, and, and that's the type of attitude that they're going to be bringing into this this Canadian division. And especially with how many back to backs and how many like how the schedule is going to be going really fast. If Vancouver plays the type of style of hockey where they're going to go out there and they're going to beat up everyone, this team might be one of the best teams that I look at physically compared to like another team like Calgary who improved themselves physically as well. Vancouver might be one of the scarier teams physically because of Roussel. Roussel loves to hit. Um, you got Beagle down there, Vertanen. If if some of those guys and I mean their defense core too, like you got Jordy Ben down there, and, and now you might be picking up Hamannik. Um, If this team gets themselves going a little bit, they might not be the worst team in the Canadian Division. I don't see goal scoring as a problem for the Vancouver Canucks. At some moments of time, yes, with their depth scoring, but that's really it with the Canucks. Yeah, I'm just so high on Elias Pettersson and oh, same. Uh, Brock Besser that I think this team will do top three in the Canadian, at least. I still do. They still got room. I also like Adam Gaudet a lot. We talked about mm-hmm. this before when we were talking about trading. I think it's almost unfortunate that he has to play in that third spot. I think he could play on the second line as a second line center on a lot of teams. Uh, so that what that. For that purpose, it's depth. If there's one good thing to say about their depth is if they have to add a winger, which they probably will, wingers are one of the easiest things to find. So uh, maybe at the trade deadline, you can find a winger to play on that line. Uh, unfortunately, they have to have Louis Erickson. Talk about elephant in the room. You got to come in every day knowing we don't have to fully because of Louis Erickson. We don't have... We can't stock our cupboards because of Louis Erickson. And Louis Erickson comes in going, hi, guys. Everything's going great, right? No, Louis, it's not. You're an idiot. I, I don't but, think I'm Louis sorry, Erickson. But... I don't think Louis Erickson gives a crap, honestly. I think he's just going in there making that six mil, maybe maybe scoring a goal here or two sometimes and, and going home. I think that's what Louis Erickson's doing. It's It, it, it was such a dumb contract by Jim Benning and – it, it definitely does handicap him. Like, if you didn't have Louis Erickson on the team, like you were saying, you could have had Tyler Toffoli back on the team, who honestly was a great second-line guy for that team. I think 
what the plan for Jim Benning is, though, I think they're putting a lot of trust either on Adam Goddett to jump on the second line and maybe Goddett plays that second line right wing or Jake Vertanen jumps up in that second line and actually become who he is actually supposed to be instead of be weighing like 226 pounds, which he, he seems a bit overweight, which we were talking about before the show, that Jake Vertanen needs to step up now. And this is the year where he could potentially step up, right? There's a lot of games to be played. He's kind of given, he, he was kind of given a prove it or not contract two years at a really cheap contract. It's a prove it or now deal for Jake Vertanen, especially since they lost to Foley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, Benning's not a guy that comes out and talks a lot in the media and stuff like that. But he has brought it up with Vertanen, where it's basically like, it's up to him now. You know, we've done everything mm-hmm. we can. That's basically what he's saying. Jake, and you mentioned it, 226, 6'1 six, and 226. I mean, for the type of game he has, that's way overweight. It's not like, like the- he's... Bo- it's not like he's Bo Horvat, who's six feet two fifteen, but he plays a heavy type game. For Tannen's built on speed, and he doesn't. He's getting to the point where he's getting to the weight now, where that speed's not going to even be effective. Yeah, yeah, it's like Lucic weight. Yeah, it's not good. It's not like he's beating guys up in the corners or something like that. No, if he was, it would be all right, but. Yeah, it's not. It's. I agree with you. Jake Furtanen is huge for this team. If he can turn it around, get his head, whatever he's got to do, get in shape and play, because he's got all the skill in the world. The guy's got a shot. Off that, off that right side, he can pick a corner like nobody's business, man. But if you can't get to the spots to pick the corner, then what are you going to do? Um, that's really their biggest pro- problems right now is they have – Louis Erickson, which is a terrible contract. Jake Furtanen, who's not living up to his expectations. Brandon Sutter is overpaid right now. Um, you mentioned that it's nice to have that weight with Anton Roussel and Jay Beagle to play that big game, but at six million e- or three million each, they got that's a lot of money bad. wrapped wrapped up into guys that can't score, and that's what probably may prevent him. So, looking at that, let's look at. What do you think now with all of these moves? What do you think? Where do you where do you position them? What do, what do they look like for their future as far as where they may end up in the playoffs or in the regular season and their future in general? What's the future for Vancouver look like to you? I'm excited about Vancouver. I'm actually quite scared as an Oilers fan um, having to deal with Pedersen or Besser um, in the future playoffs. Once you get Imagine a team if you have Roussel, Sutter, Beagle, Erickson off your team, and Myers not on your team. This team would be fantastic. Their future outlook is fantastic. You got Jet Wu, you got you got Hoglander, you got Paul Colson, who has been looking great in the World Juniors. He's been a force. Uh, Advo- uh, Arvid uh, Cosmore, who has uh, played there for Team Sweden, a seventh round pick for the Vancouver Canucks, is played also well. looking yeah. great. He mm-hmm. he's just a little underdog out there, five eleven, but plays like he's a big guy, and he really is just he he. Without a doubt, I love the way he plays. Um, I've been watching a lot of Sweden, so uh, Arvid Cosmore has been one of my favorite players out of the he entire ha- he has tournament. Stood out. He has stood out a lot on that lineup, for sure. He really yeah. has. And as only a 19-year-old, he's been producing pretty well, especially for this World Juniors. He didn't do too bad. Um, their future there in Vancouver is looking really excited. Just you, you, The future, it, you don't even have to go anywhere. You just have to look at Quinn Hughes, Pedersen, and Besser, and it's like an end of story. Otherwise, this year, I think they'll do pretty good. I think they'll probably make it into a playoff spot. I don't know how far they'll go. I think this team is a playoff team, like always, because because of the fact that they got a lot of people who will bruise you up and hit you on you. They they are a perfect playoff team. I don't know how well they'll do in the regular season, especially since they're not a like I guess a regular season team. You look at this team and you see a lot of big bodies. You see this team as a playoff team. Uh, a team that could possibly make it to the conference finals because they will beat on you. It's like a Dallas Stars sort of team, right? Um, now, if you add some goals going on to this team, I could see this team maybe potentially being a Stanley Cup team here in the future, for sure. This team just needs those last and final cup of piece, uh, pieces to make this team 
a for sure fire team, a second line winger who could score some goals, uh, better depth in this team for sure is a great team to look at for the future. And I'm honestly looking at every single Canadian team. I'm super excited about looking at every single Canadian team, especially since most of these teams have been struggling for years uh, and seeing another team like the Vancouver Canucks growing like this with Pedersen and Besser is just fantastic. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very fun team to watch. And thank you, Peyton, for coming on and spreading all your pearls to the land. It was great. Always is. And we will be back with all of you guys. Head over to steelflyers.com. I'm telling you, man, it's going to be so much fun over there. We're going to be doing two-hour live shows here starting in January. We're incorporated now. We're a business, and it's going to be amazing. You guys are awesome. Hit the subscribe. Head over to Peyton's there and have fun in his channel as well. Hit the subscribe over there. We'll be back again with a new series, new all kinds of fun for the new year. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.